The following program is brought to you through a sustainability grant from U-Haul International. Since 1945, U-Haul has been committed to sustainability through environmental protection, social responsibility, and economic efficiency. My name is Gwen Reynolds and I'm a teacher at Tempe High School. I teach biology and biotechnology. I've taught here for 20 years. Um, over the last five years, I've had the privilege of teaching biotechnology, which is fairly new in the realm of history. And it's really interesting. It's amazing what we can do in the field of biotechnology. Microbes are usually unicellular organisms, which means they're made of one cell and they can fulfill all of life's functions just on their own. They can metabolize and they can reproduce. They can do everything that a human can, but they're little bitty tiny creatures. They're actually, bacteria are the smallest creatures on our planet. And they were the first creatures on our planet. The first organisms on our planet were bacteria. And they arrived about three and a half billion years ago. They were the first things here. They will probably be the last. We've lived in a, a mutual relationship with bacteria and we actually need them to survive. We depend on bacteria for our food digestion. We have E. coli, that's a type of bacteria that lives in our intestines. And if we did not have that bacteria in our intestines, then we would not survive. They cover every surface of our planet. They can even live in volcanoes and hot springs like Yellowstone National Park. Uh, they are highly adaptable and we can manipulate them. So, We've learned how to manipulate bacteria since the 1960s. And we started inserting genes into the bacteria to make them do what we want them to do. One of the biggest things that we do is we make human insulin. We um, now can get insulin for very cheap because we have bacteria mass produce it. So scientists started looking at how bacteria can benefit us. We've known forever that we can use bacteria to make food. We can use it to make cheese, yogurt. We can use it to make beer, wine, a lot of great things that people enjoy. So scientists started thinking, why can't we use this to solve our problems that face us every day, problems that humans cause? Can we use this in our, for our benefit to help clean up our environment? So scientists found these naturally occurring bacteria in the oceans that break down hydrocarbons, which are a huge component of oil. And they started thinking, well, what if we use these bacteria to break down oil that, that we produce as humans, that we use? So they use actually bacteria, they use the process of bioremediation to help clean up the Exxon Valdez oil spill. That was the first huge use of these microbes. I believe the best thing about this is they're natural. They're part of our planet, we depend on them, and they don't harm our planet in any way. Only, actually only 10% of bacteria is harmful to humans. 90% is necessary to humans. Big thing about bioremediation, one of the things I want to emphasize is that the byproducts are water and carbon dioxide. So it gets back into the, the whole circle of life kind of thing. We breathe out carbon dioxide and water and plants take in carbon dioxide and water and then they give us oxygen and food. So I remember being a child and my grandfather would change the oil in the driveway and he would always put down cat litter if he spilled any of the oil. And I never understood why he would put down cat litter, but it was he was trying to absorb the oil. And then he would just sweep up the cat litter and throw it away. That doesn't get rid of the problem. That just puts the, cat, puts the oil into the cat litter and then puts the oil somewhere else. So we can now use bioremediation to clean up those small oil spills on our driveway. You can just spread the bacteria onto the the spill and over a matter of time it will break down the oil and make water and carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. 